going and making sure and giving me the thumbs up is like. Good evening. Welcome to our concert, Bieber, Bach, and Beethoven. We are Red Cedar Chamber Music. My name is Mira Kim. I'm the executive director and I play the violin. And here to my left is Kerry Boston. He's the artistic director and he plays the cello. We will be joined by our sons, but not for this first number. Um, of course, during these uh, self-isolation times, we have decided to continue to bring music to you. So we're happy that you're joining us. And we, of course, have the luxury of being able to work with ourselves as a family and broadcast from our home in Iowa City. A couple housekeeping things, if anyone would like uh, to look at a program, print one out or download it, that's available at our website, uh, www.redcedar.org. There's also a link in the description box below uh, to take you there, and it's right near the top of the page. Uh, as well, there's a link at the very bottom of this description box that is, we're, we're calling it the emergency link. So just in case we have some sort of technical difficulty and we have to end this stream in order to um, problem solve, then we would try to come back up on that emergency link, which you can find below. So the first work on our program um, is uh, a, a Baroque piece uh, by Heinrich Bieber called Sonata Representativa. It's actually a sonata for violin and continuo. Um, and Bieber was a, a genius, great violinist and virtuoso, and, and, and wrote many violin works that were um, experimental in nature, strange tunings and, uh, and, and things of that nature. And especially for the time. And especially for the time, he was, uh, he was really a groundbreaker. He also wrote this piece, which is, um, uh, the best way to describe it is, is it's a, a Baroque version of Saint-Saëns' Carnival of the Animals. Um, there are, it's, a, it's a set of variations in different styles, and each, each uh, variation represents uh, an animal or a character. Um, but the, uh, the piece requires, for us, or, or for, for me, a little more introduction. There is a third page on your program which is notes about the Giant Jam Sandwich Project, which was a, uh, a commissioning project that I did with composer Philip Wharton and author Janet Burroway um, between 2008 and 2013. But Philip has uh, been, you know, a great friend and colleague for 30 years now, and uh, we met at the Ohio State University in, I think it was 1990. Um, he had just finished uh, um, his uh, an undergraduate degree at Eastman Conservatory in violin, and then advanced solo studies from Guildhall School in London. And he studied composition at Ohio State, I think, for two years. Um, and we were colleagues there and played together. Um, but Philip grew up in Decorah, Iowa. So after I moved to Iowa, Philip and I started seeing each other and working together. He came, came and played on one of my doctoral recitals. And, uh, and I've enjoyed playing and promoting his music for years. Um, so we had this great commissioning project, which I hope you'll read about, and it included uh, two children's books that, that were illustrated by John Vernon Lord, a very incredibly detailed, uh, intricate illustrator, and words by Janet Burroway. Um, well, we came to the third project, which was to be uh, a new children's book called The Perfect Pig, written by Janet Burroway, and John Vernon Lord was sort of too busy to illustrate it. So Philip, um, because he has a great background in art, his grandfather taught him, and his grandfather was on the art faculty at Luther College for many, many years. Philip illustrated the book, and I published it, uh, College Street Music. And here it is, 
the perfect pig. Um, and, you know, when I started my career, I never thought I would put dancers on live radio. But that gave me courage to put silent film on live radio. But certainly, I never thought I'd be a children's book publisher. I didn't think that was part of the business. And here we are live streaming. So um, it's a strange world. At any rate, the fourth piece in the project wasn't original music by Philip Wharton or uh, art. It was, um, it was a uh, piece, this piece by Bieber. And the idea was that the local art students, children, would, um, would supply the art for us to project while the music played and the verses were read. Um, so we've used this piece in its original chamber orchestra version and as a piano trio and, and, and frequently just with, with the violin and cello, the cello just playing the bass line and, and not the harmonies. Um, and we wanted to do this because the verses by Janet are so charming and it's wonderful, it's a wonderful thing to take into schools. But we wanted to share it with you and asked Philip if he wouldn't mind going ahead and doing artwork for all the characters. He had done the frog as a cover page for the score. Um, so these, uh, the artwork you'll see tonight, you're the first to see anywhere. And, um, and we hope you'll enjoy it. It's, it's on the other end, I'm sure. There's a lag, but, but it's, I mean, it's the receiving end. Is, I'm sure, I can't Are we good? Heinrich Ignaz Franz Bieber von Biebern. If by chance you think so many names are gross, pull up a chair and listen close. The Bieber in my name means beaver, and that means I'm an overachiever. Although, to make my music great, I hardly ever hibernate, but sit composing all year long so you can hear the forest song. My name is Heinrich Ignaz Franz Bieber von Biebern. First, let's dance. tune, beguiling, appealing, enthralling, compelling, more famous at night than the sight of the moon. <laughs> Thank you. 
my caterpillar's hairy. I like my larva squishy, very cuckoo. My song is hiccup and a hack. Two toes point four and two point back. Cuckoo. When I lay eggs, I think it best to lay them in some other nest. Cuckoo. I'm very famous for my clock, but this is what I find a shock. Of all the birds that sail and swoop, why should my name mean nincompoop? my kingdom Caribbean, where you've never been because you're not an amphibian. Everyone calls me the fabulous frog, for my digits are webbed to hold on to my log. And I don't need a tail, but my tongue is so awesome, I pick little bugs the way you'd pick a blossom. I puff out my throat, but don't try it, you'll choke. And I let out a purely fantabulous croak. If you heard it, you'd probably fall on your knees. There have been occasions it toppled the trees. Oh, it ripples and tickles the length of the bog. It's no wonder a prince would turn into a frog. and screech and haggle, and when I get a hankering for him, I call him with my cockalorum. And if some noisy chanticleer comes by and spoils the atmosphere, I take out my claws and whoop it good, cause I'm the cock of this neighborhood. <laughs> Don't give a hoot. My voice is light, my step staccato, my plumage bright, and here's my motto. Puff your breast and shake your tail and thank your stars, you're born a quail. 
simply exhausted. I can't move a muscle. Oh my. I wore myself out on a morsel of gristle. That's why. I'm thinking of giving my paws a good washing, perhaps. Or maybe just crashing, because I am smashing at naps. I jump on the shelf, but I can't really bother. No, sir. What's that on the feather? Uh, what's that on the leather? A feather? See whether I purr. <laughs> Musketeer of the living room, with my Admiral Frog and my Colonel Cat, and a rooster feather in my hat. I install my troops on the Persian rug, then I aim and fire at a flying bug. I advance at a crawl, I creep and crouch, I yell, attack, and I take the couch. So rummy tum tum, boom diddy boom, I'm off to invade the dining room. The mazurka from Poland, the can-can from France, the maypole, the polka, the waltz, and the jig. The Hungarian chartist is still very big. In old Puerto Rico, they shake to the bamba, whereas in Brazil, they go in for the samba. In Bali, the gong. Madrid, the fandango. In Moscow, the troika. Cordoba, the tango. And if you don't know how to dance, you just fake it, for even in breakdance, you don't really break it. So get up and swing, do si do or gavotte, go ballet or belly, but give it a shot. <laughs>
<laughs> Thank you. So we should explain, um, in Philip Wharton's piano trio arrangement of this piece, he put these fun bits in the piano part. And since we weren't having a pianist with us, we extracted those fun bits and gave them to, uh, as a friend of ours said, those quality instruments, the trombone kazoo, and the melodica, and the castanets. And all three of those instruments are actually, um, they didn't just accidentally appear in this house. They're actually um, <laughs> instruments I've played in performance. So, I mean, it is an interesting life. The, oh, the trombone you. kazoo yeah. was from the Brinton Silent Film Project. And actually, the melodica goes way back to the, to the time when, when uh, I was at Ohio State University. And I was doing a lot of new music with another composer friend of mine, Keith Fleming. Um, and, and he composed a melodica quartet. <laughs> and he bought the melodicas. And we performed this melodica quartet, um, the four of us. And we all got to keep our melodicas. <laughs> So that was a that was that was a a great deal. A well paying gig. It was a good paying gig, yeah. Um, yeah. So. Now what I wanted to say is, I consider you a trombone kazoo virtuoso. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Honey. After seeing you in the bridge. It's all practice. <laughs> it's practice. Go ahead, Adrian. <laughs> For our next non-traditional setting of a baroque work, um, we've taken uh, something from our. 2017 program, Backlash Bach. This is a viola da gamba sonata um, by Bach, written for not violin and continual like the Bieber was, but viola da gamba and harpsichord obbligato. The difference being that while it has a bass line, uh, a basso continuo sonata, like you just heard, there would be chords in the right hand, but they're not determined by the composer. They're determined by the harpsichord player. And they're not, they're not independent. Now, when Bach wrote a harpsichord obbligato sonata, uh, th there were two independent voices, one for the right hand and one for the left hand, so treble and bass. So the harpsichord tonight is represented by Mira on the violin, the right oh, hand, no. and... Oh, right. On the yeah, right. yeah, your right hand. <laughs> and the bass, bass hand, the left hand, um, the one that's on your left, Adrian. Is, uh, is represented by Adrian playing the cello. I'm playing the viola da gamba on the cello. Um, but at any rate, this is, uh, um, there are 13 of these sonatas for a solo instrument and harpsichord obbligato. We have, as Red Cedar, um, performed and recorded the three gamba sonatas. We've played two of the flute sonatas with Jan Boland, a former, former uh, executive director. Um, <laughs> And then uh, we've also done two of the violin sonatas. Um, and we're looking forward to um, doing uh, another, uh, another one of the violin sonatas too, soon. Um, but at any rate, this, uh, you know, it's, it's great music. And this is a, 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 a non-traditional setting, but it opens up the world of chamber music by Bach to almost any instrumentation. Treble, treble, and bass. Treble, tenor, and bass. Treble, bass, and bass. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's um, you know, you could even hear a saxophone trio playing this music. What about a melodica trio? You could hear a melodica trio playing this music, or you could hear a duo. The, uh, <laughs> you should check out the melodica men for sure. Yeah. At any rate, one, one final note, if you liked the Bieber and would like to know more about Janet Burway's work or Philip Wharton's work in the in the uh, in the uh, description concert description of the stream. There are links to their websites as well.
So um, this is a, a, a young work for Beethoven. It's an Opus 9. And uh, his, uh, his set, first set of string quartets um, is actually uh, Opus 18. Now, Beethoven had, had really high standards. Um, and, and actually, he, he didn't publish uh, many of his early works. Um, it, it, took, it took a while. There were some pre-opus, uh, pre-opus piano quartets that I once read, you know, for this instrumentation, violin, viola, cello, and piano, which, which, you know, were really pretty bad. Um, so he was probably right to, not to publish them. At any rate, he was right to publish these. But I um, believe that um, while they are wonderful uh examples of, of early Beethoven in that they're great dramatic uh, energy and um, beautiful, uh, beautiful slow movement and a, and, a, and a really fanciful, fun scherzo movement with, with not one but two trios um, and then a, just a, a kind of a shit kicker last movement. Um, you know, really great early Beethoven. Um, so I think that uh, Beethoven probably had in his head already, though he was writing for his trio, the sound of a quartet. <laughs> and um, so I would have to say that uh, there, there are challenges to playing these pieces, um, especially if you're the violist or e even the, the first violin part is often, uh, you know, they're often making up for the fact that there's no second violin. Um, the cellist is just, you know, stuck being a cellist. So, um, at any rate, this is our young young man Frank, who would like some attention. Okay. Yeah. Um, so thank you all for for being with us tonight. It's uh, it's uh, a distinct pleasure to hear from you. Please um, email a comment. Let us know what you think. Um, it's very important for us uh, to collect comments to share with our funders. Obviously, uh, since March, we haven't done anything that we said we were gonna do, um, but we've done three, <laughs> three different unplanned concert, uh, concert uh, programs. And next season, we will be continuing to live stream events, whether we can perform publicly or not. Uh, we have four, four concert programs two of which are intended to be only live streamed, and, um, and then two of which we hope we'll be able to bring to you where you are used to attending concerts. Um, so please uh, look for that. Our new series is gonna be called Hearth and Home, and we appreciate support so much and your comments so much um, because we just feel incredibly lucky to be able to do what we're doing um, and, uh, and continue where so many organizations are, are, are not able to. Um, so thank you very much. Yeah. Uh. 
Thank you. 
Okay, come on, you obnoxious 15 year old. Next job. Yeah. Thank you all so very much. It was our pleasure to play for you this evening. We had fun, even though we were sweating a little bit. <laughs> and uh, we will do one final live stream tomorrow afternoon, Saturday afternoon at 1 p.m. Thank you all very much.